Okay, we are back in our home turf today, not on the road. We will be on the road on Thursday. Spent last week with Bob on Thursday. This coming Thursday, we'll be with Agile Biker at his office. So I hope you're ready, Agile Biker. Uh, we're coming and have lots of questions for you. Expect to cover everything that Agile Biker is doing there. I know he's doing some pretty cool stuff. Uh, I want to highlight that. That's going to be part of a new uh, community highlight or community spotlight approach I want to give. I want to get out and spend time with as many of you as possible so we can highlight all the cool things you are doing. Because again, there needs to be more than one voice. This is about us as a community. So I'm excited to kick that series off. So Agile Biker, be ready. You're batting a lead off. And it got so, okay, cool. Um, for those of you that have been in Discord lately, uh, I've been trying to bring a little bit more interactivity to the stream, particularly with the topics that are being discussed, because a lot of times not everybody can start with us right when we kick off, because uh, there's other stuff going on in their lives. Completely understand that. So people tend to roll in halfway through or partway through, and they say, hey, what are we talking about? I'm trying to fix that. So I'm trying to provide a way for the current topic to be completely visible. Or maybe there's a chat command or something like that that I can do. Uh, in Discord, we talked through a couple options. Trello was proposed. Trello is there. I've got, um, I added a way for the Trello board to be visible. Whoa, that is giant. Um, right now, we're having a little bit of an issue because no one can... Uh, add cards to that board. People can vote. As you can see, that stakeholder engagement and review is the number one item uh, right over my face. <laughs> so I got to find a way to make that. I think I can make that smaller. Yeah, let me do that. Well, I'll tackle that off stream. Uh, but that's one of those things that I'm working on so that we can get a little bit better visibility into what's going on, what's being discussed. Um, so that's the that's some of the things that we're working on here in the start of 2019. Uh, speaking of that community spotlight, um, I am going to spend time with Agile Biker. Kraz457 and I are working on a few things to get something lined up, and Brave Dave and I continue to discuss how we can make that work remotely. So those are all things that hopefully in the next couple of months we can make happen. Uh, question for you guys out there. Uh, my Twitch app keeps losing internet connection like every 20 seconds or so are you guys having that same that same thing um let me know if you are maybe it's just me it was happening to me yesterday watching other streams uh, so hopefully it's not uh it's not everyone it's just something weird with my account uh yes mr wilkins we are gonna um get a retro and all kinds of stuff um so but first thing i want to talk about is that a uh, question that came in over Discord about, um, <laughs> oh boy, okay, well, Mr. Wilkins, we're going to go over that. I want to get to uh, the original question from Brave Dave that Brave Dave posted in there. Let me um, roll back and see, read it exactly. Actually, I've got it up on this Trello board that you can't see. All right, so the original question was, how do you foster stakeholder engagement in a sprint review. There's a great follow-up question that uh, Jamie Collins posted, Agile Jamie Collins posted about what does good stakeholder engagement in a sprint review mean? So I thought that was a great clarifying question about um, you can get them engaged, but maybe they're engaged poorly and they're disruptive. So that's something that I know I've wrestled with in the past um, and Bob has spent a lot of time talk, talking about on our podcasts about how to manage that. We have to manage that effectively because it's important for stakeholders to be there because it really sends a message to the team when stakeholders aren't there. If I'm a team and I'm working my tail off for two weeks and trying to get all this stuff done by whenever the sprint review is, say it's Tuesday, just because that's the way we roll. Um, so it's Tuesday morning, I'm doing everything I can to get those last bits closed, get those last tests green, everything's working, we get it through our CI and CD, I get it done, okay, good, sprint reviews this afternoon, we're going to crush it, and no one shows up. 
as a team member, you start to question, do people really care? <laughs> like, does it, does this make a difference? And it's interesting because so often in that scenario, the business is complaining about the software engineering team or the product that the software team is putting out. Yet, there's no willingness to engage to help improve what's being built. Because again, from my perspective, Agile is all about making sure we build the right things. It's not gonna make developers type faster or make code run faster or be more performant. It helps highlight some of those things, but in reality, the number one goal for Agile is that we don't spend time building the wrong things. That requires feedback. So number one, the most important thing that I find is education. So I've been on this education rant for probably since I started the stream six, seven months ago. The best thing for me to do, and what I really suggest you do first, is to sit down with those people and explain what you're trying to do. Explain why that engagement, why that feedback loop is so important. Don't just assume that they know what to do. They most likely have never been a part of an agile software engineering team, never been part of an agile process. So they probably went out and read something about a sprint review. You probably gave an agile 101 talk to them or something. And they said, okay, cool. I get it. I should be there, but they don't understand the rules of the road. So number one, give them all the tools they need to be successful. And by them, I mean the stakeholders, the leaders in your org, make sure they understand number one, how important it is, and then give them some ground rules of how to be a good stakeholder in those meetings, how to ask questions constructively, how not to attack. That's usually the biggest hurdle is they want to help, but they don't know they're doing something wrong. So spend time with them to educate them. That, that's, that's number one for me. So then as you go down the path, if you've done that, you've invested in that, you've sat down, you've explained how important it is and know you're going to have to do it more than once. You're not going to have a conversation about something like this and building new behaviors, breaking old behaviors. That's not going to happen with one discussion. Should it get better with one discussion? Yes, but it won't be better without you coaching them. Again, you're an agile coach. You have to coach those leaders, those stakeholders on what it looks like to be an effective leader, an effective stakeholder. You spend a ton of time with your teams, coaching them, helping them learn, helping them build new behaviors. You have to do the same thing when you coach outward and upward. That same investment is required. It's not magic. And just like your teams didn't know what they were doing wrong, those stakeholders probably don't know what's what they're doing wrong. So you have to invest time with them and get them to understand the unknowing missteps that, that they're making. And I bet once you highlight that, they'll want to jump right in line because again, people want to make this work. It's important. Okay. I'm going to catch up on agile biker. He's got a ton going on here. So I want to read through this. There you go. Agile bikers on it again. Ooh, stakeholder expectations and rights document. I feel like that's something we should either dig into a little bit more here uh, or on Thursday when we're at your place, we can highlight that and talk about that. I think that's something I've never had something like that in place. Um, so that would be pretty cool to see and understand how that contract is put in place and what that means for people. I think that's a fantastic idea. You can dig it up. I can see if I can dig that up. Give me a break. Let's see if I can dig it up. Lynn, so regarding your question about questions and helping stakeholders understand, I again, I approach everything where I want that leader, be it a director or an architect or a chief product owner or a CEO or something like that, something like that. Um, I, I want them to only speak with questions. When you start out with a question, you're creating this tone where you're accepting that there are things you probably don't know. 
you're saying, okay, team, you made this, this decision. I don't understand why. What am I missing? What am I not understanding? What piece of information do you have that I don't have? When you set that tone, when you create that environment where it's not the boss or somebody above them making decisions, telling them they did it wrong, that creates a much better environment for, for dialogue. The first thing you have to do is create that safe discussion. And as a leader, as a stakeholder, the most important thing that you can do is get them to understand that maybe you don't know everything and that you trust them and that you expect that they've done all of the diligence needed to make the right choice. And maybe you haven't had the opportunity to dig in and understand why they made that. So ask them to educate you on why they made that choice. Ask them to educate you on that bit that's important. And then most likely the light bulb will go off because I bet your team is really good. I bet your team is really smart. So the first thing as I do with most, most leaders and stakeholders is, is speak only in questions. That number one puts everybody in a safe spot. It gets people to understand, okay, I'm not coming out and telling you you're wrong. I might think that's wrong, but I believe I trust that you did all of the right reasons all the right research to make a decision that's different than the one that I would make with the information I have right now. So I need you to give me that extra piece of info so I can connect the dots and go, Oh, that makes sense. You're right. Okay, cool. Great. Nice move guys. Let's do it again. So that's the, that's the approach I take with almost every leader that I work with is getting them to operate like that. That creates that healthy dialogue with that team where they will engage as opposed to they just shut down and say, okay, whatever you say, boss, right? That's not an effective engagement practice from leaders. Thanks for the follow, Slentel. I hope I got that right. Yeah, that um, planting experienced stakeholders is something that I know Bob has done. Bob Galen, my co-host on on my podcast that's something that he's done is he's he's not only planted experienced stakeholders but he's planted questions with new stakeholders so he gave them he basically gave them a script of okay after they go through this demo ask this question and it's a script number one that sets the stage in both directions it shows the team, hey, this person's engaged. This person wants to be here. They're asking really good questions. From the leader's perspective, it's training wheels. It gets them in the game. It gets them understanding. It shows them a nice entry point. It starts that dialogue off, and they start to see the real value of that ceremony. That will hook them and bring them back. So I think that's a great move, both to plant stakeholders, but also to give new stakeholders planted scripts so that way they can go in with confidence and be successful. Think again, think of the Shuha remodel. Think of that new stakeholder or that stakeholder, excuse me, that's new to, to this process. They need to operate as a shoe type person. So give them the tools they need to be successful. Don't just expect because they're some CXO that they know what to do. It's their first time. Give them some training wheels. Those are things that I look back at certain times as I've launched sprint demos and sprint reviews that I know I haven't done well enough that I know the next time I do that, I'm going to do a lot better. All right, we'd be happy to help with that question, Slentil, assuming I got the word right. <laughs> So the, the Lego workshop Agile Biker is something that gets thrown around a lot, um, especially amongst the coaches I know here in Raleigh. Uh, Thursday, I'd like to talk about the Lego workshop and what that is, because that's, that's one of those broad brush strokes that you can do a lot of different workshops with, with Legos. So, all right, Slentil, hit us with that question. We are ready. Let me look in the chat here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six regulars here that I know can jump in. 
Yeah. Again, that that's a it's something that I know the Lego workshop in response to Brave Brave Dave's question that I know a lot of folks um, throw around here, and I know some of the coaches that I've worked with use that in a bunch of different ways. I've I've never used it. There's a couple of other things that I do, um, but it's just known as the Lego workshop. Um, so I want to make sure I'd like to get that out there as a resource for everybody that's a part of this stream to have in their back pocket whenever they need to, because I know stakeholders are often difficult to, to wrangle. But again, go back to the Shuha remodel. Understand that this is most likely their first time going through something like this. This is their first time being a part of a process where they're asked to engage on a regular basis. And not only are they being asked to engage on a regular basis, but you're likely asking them to engage differently than they've ever engaged before. My assumption is that many times when you go and you lead a transformation, it was command and control. So those same people were standing at the top, handing out tasks, telling people whether they did it well or whether they didn't. Now you flip the script. Now that person's trying to figure out, okay, how do I play this game? So help that person understand what it's like to engage. <laughs> yeah, Brave Dave, that, that, that's, a, that's a common theme. And what I go back to, so in Brave Dave's question about getting stakeholders to actually engage, is I think you just have to ask them, how important are the products that our team is creating? How important are they to the success of your team? And if they're not that important to the success of your team, then maybe they're not really a stakeholder. And maybe it's okay that they disengage. But if they come back to you and talk about all the things and how the quality of that software is going to make their life, their team's life better, then explain to them that this process is set up to enable that. But also explain that they have the knowledge and the expertise that the team needs to be as successful as they possibly can. Yes, you have product owners that are out there doing the research, but if those stakeholders don't engage with the product owners or don't engage for one hour every two weeks in a sprint review, then you've got to ask them, is this really definitive in how well your team's going to operate? And maybe it's not, maybe it's okay. Maybe you sit down with them and they realize, okay, the software isn't the thing that drives us. But in reality, those members of the sales team are selling your product or the marketing team is trying to market your product or the training team is trying to train your customers on that product. It's gonna be a huge part of their lives. So again, my expectation, Brave Dave, is that they don't, they don't really understand the new paradigm, how we're all in this together. We as an organization are responsible for building the best software possible for our customers. And if they're a customer, if they truly are a customer of the software, say it's an internal product and that customer support team is your primary customer. I don't know anybody that would shy away from the opportunity to speak to the people that are building the product that they use every day or buy, essentially. People want to make things better. They have those frustrations. And if you show them the importance and the opportunity that they have to be a voice in making things better, I doubt you'll have a hard time getting people to engage. But again, that we're too busy doing real, real work, that's an education issue. They don't really understand what Agile is offering them. So that's when you as a coach need to spend time breaking through that. And that's probably just a conversation in their office. Like I wouldn't schedule a meeting. I wouldn't do anything real heavy. Just sit down and say, okay, let's, let's talk about this Agile process or whatever you want to call it. Maybe don't even say Agile. Maybe forget the Agile word. Just, hey, let's talk about how we can engage our two teams together to ensure the product we're building meet your needs as much as possible. Who's going to shy away from that? Who's going to say, you know what? I don't have time for that. 
maybe they don't think they have time for that sprint review or that meeting with a product owner or whatever it is, but once you show them how their engagement can ensure success for the product and for their team, I think they'll be in a much different spot. I'm catching up on the chat here. Yeah, again, the thing I keep coming back to is even your CEO, who might be the most experienced person you've ever worked with, maybe the most business savvy person you've ever worked with, I bet, I bet they've never been asked to engage like this before with a software engineering team. So sure, you go, you sit down, you talk with them, you explain the process, you explain what's going on, you explain they're a stakeholder, you tell them they have an opportunity to engage. They're excited. Cool. How do I get in the game? Right? You have to coach them just like you coach your teams. You don't go in and have a two-hour meeting with your teams and say, okay, here's Agile. Here's the ceremonies. Here's the processes. Here's how you do it and then walk away. Right? It's a steady, consistent coaching approach. The same thing exists with your stakeholders. You have to figure out how to balance that investment of your time <laughs> because it's it takes a lot to coach. Right? Think about all the time you spend coaching your, your, your team. Every moment you spend away from the team, you have a little bit of fear of, okay, how are they doing? Do I need to be there to help them? The same thing happens with your stoke, stakeholders. But when you understand the importance of that relationship with the stakeholders, and how it can truly accelerate your team and their success, then I think you'll find that it's worth spending that time with them. Yeah, I could see that. You know, the thing that's interesting is, um, and maybe Eric, Eric, I think on it, maybe Agile Biker can go into a little bit more on Thursday. I've never had like specific stakeholder labels where like I've given somebody like a driver's license or a stakeholder license says you are now certified to be a stakeholder in our team. You now can do this. I've never created a clear delineation like that where there was a specific role that was enviable. It's always been implied um, or just organizationally known so I think that's an interesting approach I have to think about that and how I would do that so agile biker is that something that you do like do you say hey like you you x people are stakeholders you people are not or is it more informal Yeah, you know, that was interesting in our reviews um, at Dude Solutions. There were times where we would have 100 plus people there. And the team would get excited because they would look forward to that feedback. Uh, but then some of those stakeholders were unsure how to engage. And they would talk after to the PO or somebody. And then we had to spend time getting them to say, no, actually, it's cool to bring it up in the sprint, sprint review. So maybe like an ongoing certified stakeholder course or something like that. Like, hey, you're new here and we have these sprint reviews every two weeks. How do you engage? What do you do? What's a safe way to ask? When's the right time to ask? Who do I ask? That's an interesting approach. Yeah, you know, it was one of those things that, that regarding Agile Bikers, um, it's weird. Once we started getting like 100 plus people, the, the engagement went down. 
because of the sheer number. I think people were, um, I don't know if nervous was the right word about speaking up, speaking out in a spot like that. Um, or if it was, okay, I don't want to hold up these other 90 people with my question. Uh, so I think we may have let it get a little bit too big and that had an opposite effect of what we were trying to create with a truly engaged sprint review. Now we always had the one or two that were comfortable and ready and willing to always speak up. So there was that. Um, but once it got to be such a size, then it was, um, two, two different things. Haha. <laughs> Demo and review are two different things. Uh, I actually don't operate like that. I just squish them together and I'm sure that's going to create a passionate response from somebody. At least agile biker is going to table flip and say, what are you talking about? Um, but I, I don't normally split them. I do a demo and a review all in one, sometimes a review and a demo. So that, I'm ready for this. <laughs> also, as a reminder, if you have not, if you did subscribe with Twitch Prime in the past, it does not auto renew. So if you would like to keep subscribing with Twitch Prime, hit that subscribe button up above um, my face or Walter's face. <laughs> and if it's available, uh, you can subscribe for free or it might say not yet if your month subscription is not up yet. So just a heads up while we wait for Agile Biker to um, virtually slap me on my statement. Oh, I guess we'll tackle this on Thursday. So let's talk about topics for Thursday, Agile Biker. Uh, we're gonna talk about the contract. We're gonna talk about um, sprint demo and review. Um, and then there was another thing. I would go back through my notes here. Um, and talk about that. So there's a couple things around stakeholder. We also want to just cover everything that Agile Biker is doing. Um, so I will see you on Thursday um, and everybody else we can keep the conversation going. <laughs> yep, definitely company wide Agile. That'll be topic number one. So we will cover that for sure. Okay, so a um, couple of notes here just operationally for everyone. <laughs> See Agile Biker. We'll chat on Thursday. I'll be there bright and early in preparation for our stream so we can knock it out of the park. Uh, we're going to be transitioning our stream times uh, because I've got a longer term engagement starting most likely next week that's going to have me um, unavailable to do these 10 a.m. streams on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So the thing I want to try um, is I want to try a Sunday night two-hour stream. So once a week, but a longer stream. So that would allow us to queue up some more topics, have some more discussion throughout the week in Discord, trying to line things up. My hope is Sunday night we can answer all the questions, any concerns that people may have leading into that upcoming week. So that Monday morning you can walk into work um, ready to crush whatever's in front of you. So this will most likely be the last Tuesday and Thursday morning streams uh, for at least a quarter. Um, and then after that, we'll see how things sort out. So I expect to be um, occupied with Kazi, so it's a really good thing for Kazi. It's made it difficult for me to figure out for Kazi's stream how to manage that. So we're gonna try, we're gonna do a couple of experiments. This is a discussion that's been going on in Discord because I saw this coming for quite a while and wanted to reach out to some of the regulars and make sure that I was able to support them still being a part of the stream. So the one person I'm worried about is Mr. Agile Jamie Collins. Because I know if I do this on a Sunday evening here on the East Coast of the U.S., it's going to be like the middle of the night over there in the U.K. So, 
I wanted to get that out there for Mr. Jamie Collins, um, see what we can do to support him because he's been a member of this for such a long time. Um, I don't want to just cast him to the side. So I want to figure out how we can do this, but um, most likely Sunday night will be the next thing. I will update Discord. I'll update the Twitch channel. I'll update via Twitter. Basically every every channel I have uh, to get the word out. Once there's a decision made, we're going to go that route. The other thing is I've received some feedback about people's capability to tune in in the 10 a.m. stream on a Tuesday and Thursday because they're busy doing a job. So, so Agile Biker had a meeting at 10:30. I'm sure lots of other people had a meeting. Um, Scrum Sarge, who's one of our mods that's been here for a long time, that is always super engaged, had a meeting this morning. So my hope is that we can use that to um, accelerate and make this community even bigger and stronger. Over time, um, I'm thinking about maybe during the week I can start to sprinkle some of those things back. So I just want to let everybody know that that's going to be a change that's happening probably towards the end of this week. Again, I will let everyone know it's not going to be a surprise. Um, so I do want to figure that out pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah, okay, so that's the thing. You know, um, hopefully, thank you, K-Guy. Thanks for following. Um, one of the things that I'm hopeful is that we've been, from a, a stream perspective, if you, if you just look at stats, we generally max out around uh, 12 or 15 viewers. We've had a couple times up over 20. And I think it's just people's capability to tune in during a Tuesday and Thursday at 10 a.m. I picked 10 a.m. because I was hopeful we could support folks in Europe, folks on the East Coast, and folks on the West Coast. I think in reality, the fact that it's um, that its timing isn't working. So I want to do some experiments and try and try some things out. So we'll give it a shot. It's an experiment. We're going to continuously iterate in hopes to improve the way our stream works in the community that we're building. So we're going to give it a shot and see how that goes. Okay, Mr. Wilkins, you mentioned a retro that didn't go well. Um, Please share so we can help because we've all been there. I know I've been a part of some retros that have not gone well at all. But in the meantime, let me take a peek here. Inching towards that follower goal of 100 that would be pretty cool so let's just look right here activity a couple new followers to die to the uh, jeez today <laughs> the k guy and slintle uh, thanks a bunch we had a, a prime subscription yesterday off stream so that's exciting thanks to everybody for being part of that Oh, I got you. Okay, okay, okay. So, uh, maybe we don't do the retro right now. Maybe we don't do the retro <laughs> on stream. I'm more than happy to do that, but I understand if you want to do it um, in a one-on-one -on -one manner. So, let's just use Discord to make that happen. Um, so, just send me a direct message on Discord, and we'll and we'll talk that through and see and see how we can help. Um, I do want to, Mr. Wilkins, get you out. Uh, to where I'm at and have you just be a shadow for a day or so um, so we can we can help you out there so again for those of you that are new and we do have a couple new followers here uh, the intent is that this is this is what I'm calling like a mentoring as a service if you're in the software engineering world or an agile coach a scrum master or something like that and maybe there's not a mentor right around for you to go ask these questions that's what this is all about we have a group of fantastic people that have been with this stream from pretty early on that when you ask a question you'll see it won't be just me throwing out an answer that's we're we're here to help you 
go into that next meeting with a bit more confidence or lead that next retro or sprint planning session or backlog refinement or just go have a difficult discussion with your boss or maybe go have a difficult discussion with that coworker that's been a pain in your side for a while. We're here to help you. Um, and oftentimes people are left without mentors or a safe place to ask questions. That's what this is about. So every week you can come in, you can tune in, you can join our discord and ask this group of fantastic coaches, Hey, how do I get a, how do I get over this hump? What can I do? I've never had to tackle this before. So that's what we're here. So if you're new, those new followers jump in, ask questions. If it's like a sprint review and there's too many people to ask questions, uh, that's fine. You can just do it in discord. Maybe it's safer there for you. But again, we're here to give you a safe place to get the help that you need to be successful in your roles. So brave Dave, I don't, I, I've never had targeted retrospectives. And the reason I haven't used targeted retrospectives is because I don't like to walk in thinking that I know all of the things that are enabling us or holding us back. When I have done that, I've narrowed the scope and that narrow scope I've always worried has limited the discussion and limited our team's ability to talk about the things because we're focused on one thing. Maybe there's times where you have a separate one. Maybe you have a separate retro just to, hey, let's let's talk about our sprint reviews because they're terrible. How are we going to make it better? That's a separate thing. At the end of the sprint, I want the team to put everything on the table and be ready, willing, and able to throw the wild left field thing out there. That's the, that's what I like to do again, because I, I don't want to limit what people are willing to talk about because I think I know the answer. And oftentimes that's why I end up doing that is, Hey, I think I know what's wrong. So I try and guide people say, Hey, let's just talk about this from a traditional sprint retro. That's not the approach I take. Now I have done separate retros or a separate discussion about a specific topic that's maybe a bit more more targeted I've heard a lot about tasty cupcakes of late it's been something that I know I hadn't heard of before the stream and I was probably a couple months ago that tasty cupcakes was just everywhere So it's tastycupcakes.org. And it does seem to have a lot of good inter... Oh, that's right. This is a website with that creepy clown that uh, I hope it's not creepy to everybody else, but <laughs> it's creepy to me. That was the first thing that struck me when I went to that website. Like, oh my gosh, maybe I have some weird clown fear that I didn't know of some weird phobia that has just been discovered thanks to tasty cupcakes so yeah there's that yeah see okay I'm glad it's not it's not just me uh, I don't know if it's the wink or just the general clowniness of that guy but yeah that uh that's a little concerning. <laughs> All right, so we've so we've confirmed it's the wink, at least for Lynn, the wink is the <laughs> concerning slash creepy part. Yeah, so Kraz, I agree completely. Um using seed questions to get the party started. And again, the the key statement that you're making right there is to get the dialogue flowing. That's really what you want to do. There's some times where you have to, you have to poke and prod to get the, to get the floodgates to open up because maybe there's some elephant in the room that people are afraid to talk about. So that's your job as an agile coach to poke or whatever you need to do to get the dialogue flowing because that's ultimately 
what a good retro has is it's got a constant discussion. It's got a good debate. It's got a good set of discoveries. It's got a good set of ideas of, hey, here's, here's how we navigate out of this. Here's the things we can do. So, yeah, I agree. So one of the things that I've done with retros is oftentimes there's a pre-existing culture that's not your fault that you're just trying to overcome where there is no safety. No one feels comfortable throwing out a challenging or contradicting idea to maybe the way some other people think. So that's where you start with stickies and make it anonymous. I don't like that long term because you never actually address the problem of that communication fear that people have. So maybe to get the party started, use stickies, get people to write things down, put them on up on the board. And when somebody makes a controversial statement or a controversial observation, celebrate that. Let the team know that this is a good thing. This is a healthy thing. This is how we get better. But I'm not a believer in having the stickies be your long-term answer because I ultimately want to foster a culture where that conversation can happen face-to-face. I don't have to hide behind a sticky. But you might have to coach the team along with stickies to get them to understand what good dialogue looks like. Then you get them comfortable. You get everybody understanding how much you value that feedback. Then you start to take the stickies away. So those are things that I've done. Oh man, Lynn talking about different neural pathways. Man, that's next level. (laughs) Yeah, I found that um, oftentimes it can get stale, Kraz. So that's where I think Lynn has some really good ideas is just mix it up. Don't let it become the same retro that people have been doing for a year or two or two years where they come in and it's comfortable and it's normal and things are going good. So it's like, hey, that's when you gotta make them uncomfortable again. So give them a new approach, give them a new style, give that retro a little bit of spice. And really that's what it's about is it's not letting them get get comfortable because they've become comfortable with their sprints because they're doing good. And they've been doing retros the same way for a year. So maybe try out tasty cupcakes and that creepy, creepy clown. Yeah, I am super guilty of like the same three columns. What went well, what didn't, what are we going to do about it? And in the end, they all ask the same questions. You're still getting to the same answers, but maybe it's the uh, neural pathways that Lynn is talking about. <laughs> that going from the three columns that I do to the, to the tasty cupcakes, to the starfish approach, to whatever else is out there that might be enough to get people to just think differently or to not fall into that same old rut. So that's the approach that I would do. That's how I would roll. Okay, so I've got to ask this question again uh, because it keeps coming up. So I've got two screens here. One is my dashboard as a streamer and then, and that's on the web. And then I've got the Twitch app over on this screen. And about every 30 seconds, my Twitch app says it can't reach the internet. Is anybody else getting that? It's weird. I don't get it anywhere else. So I'm hopeful it's just me. I asked pretty early and no one else seemed to have that issue. So maybe it's just me. But it was weird because it happened last night. I was watching my son stream with the Twitch app and I was getting the same issue. But I don't I don't get it in the browser. All right. Well, Mr. Wilkins, I guess it's just me. <laughs> stagnation 
is unnatural. But again, it's one of those things that, and, and that happens when things are going good. You know, the sprints are rolling along and the retros are going pretty good. Everything's kind of fine. So it's, that's where you as a coach, you can't. And this is where I know I get in trouble because I just, I am sometimes hyper aggressive about this. And I know my teams have gotten a little bit frustrated. It's like, just let us celebrate a win. Like, I'm always like, okay, how can we make this better? How can we make this better? What can we do? That's great. Sure. Yeah, we did great, great sprint. What's better look like? So you got to be careful because I know at times I go too far in that direction. You got to temper that and try and find that right balance. But don't let it become the same. All right. Well, folks, thanks for that feedback. I guess it's just my Twitch app. Maybe I'll, I don't know. We'll give it a reboot. We'll see what happens. Go from there. Yeah, Brave Dave, that's something that I know. I've, 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 I've mixed up um, retros. I haven't done a lot with stand-ups as far as keeping them fresh. And I think that's just because I get lazy, honestly, because I get to a happy point where teams are doing great and they get their stand-ups and they're knocked out in like three minutes. And I'm like, why would I mess with that? Um, but maybe a little bit of spice would help there. Yeah, so Brave Dave, that's the one thing that I always have a mental maximum of usually two. Like historically, I would say, okay, let's pick three things. Let's vote on three things. We're going to try to try the sprint. I often boil it down to a maximum of two, sometimes one. Just depends on how beefy things are. And maybe it is just one. Like maybe you really do reduce your work in progress limit as a team of things you're trying to improve on and try and get that one thing knocked out as quickly as possible. So take all those same patterns and practices that you use with your team to become more effective at managing their work and apply it to the things that come out of your retros. Cool. All right. Um, I'm going to wrap up a little bit early today unless there's any other questions. Uh, oh, there we go. Yeah, Lynn, that's a really good question too. Uh, Mr. Wilkins, reach out to me on Discord. We'll talk about that. I'm going to continue nailing down um, timing. Again, expectation is we're going to move to Sunday nights, probably one night a week, a two-hour stream, so that way everybody's queued up, ready to rock and roll, get you all crushing that week so we can go in together and make that happen. I will send out updates of everything that goes along with that. Do remember Thursday, same time, 10 a.m., uh, we, we will be with Agile Biker. We're going to talk about a handful of different things with him. We're going to specifically dig into whole company Agile. So that's something that his company just decided to move to just before the holidays. So I know he's excited. I'm excited to see him lead the, the company through that. I think that's a fantastic thing. That's aspirationally where I want to be, the companies that I create, the companies that I'm a part of, that's going to be how we roll. So I'm really excited to watch Agile Biker's journey as he leads that. So that's that's very exciting. Amen, Brave Dave. Amen. All right. So with that, I'm going to sign off for today. I will see everybody on Thursday, if you want to chat or discuss anything, Discord your way to go. Let me pop that in there just in case everybody doesn't know. Um, so you can hop in over there and we'll continue the conversation. All right. Thanks a million, everybody. And we'll see you on Thursday.